Hey everybody, and welcome to another Jamovi video. In this one, we are continuing our uh, new modules series uh, of 2024. It's not really a series, there's no playlist or anything like that. I just wanted to talk about them. So in the last video, we talked about J reshape, J reshape. In this video, we are gonna talk about the J transform module. So where do we get these modules? We go up to here, we go up to modules. I know it's a little overlap with the SEM, that's all right. Um, we go to manage installed or we go to available. We're gonna type in J transform. And here we go, functions for common data set transfer transformations. Sebastian Yenschke, I uh, hope I got that right. Uh, and then Marcelo Gallucci. JTransform carries out common data management tasks in transformation of data set. It includes functions to search and replace values, to sort a data set after one or more variable, to change the order of variables in a data set, or to transform data sets from long to wide or from wide to long, to transpose data sets, make rows into columns and columns into rows, and to add columns from one or more additional data sets to the currently opened data set. So I've installed it. And where you'll find it when you uh, look at your top bar here, of course, you can always get to your modules this way and open up. Um, but what you're looking for is the data. Now, once you install it, it's going to flash to flash blue here to uh, show you what uh, you're looking for, right? The new thing that you installed. But here it's going to be. So here's J transform. We have search, replace, sort, change variable order, long to wide, wide to long. Check out my previous video on J reshape, which is wide to long and long to wide. Those are the same functions. Transpose and merge add columns. This is open data set with a new data set. So let's look through some of these functions quickly, briefly, and then you can explore on your own. Let's go ahead and open up a data set. Data library. Um, let's do let's do bugs. The Ryan, Wildy, and Chris 2013. Okay. So we have subject, gender, region, education, LDLF, LDHF, HDLF, and HDHF. This is the same bugs data set that you can find in JASP. Uh, I like how these are um, indicated uh, here a little bit better than in JASP because we have disgust and fright or something or fear. F is frightening or fear or something like that. In any case, that's what it is. All right. So let's go up into data and let's go for cert. Let's we can include computed, transformed, ID, and here it gives us what we'll be uh, what we're looking for. Please type the term to be searched into the text box. If you want that partial matches, i.e., the search term appears within values, right? So, uh, which is the default for most searches are found. Leave the text box whole word unset unless we want the whole word. Include, exclude, collapse box permits uh, to specifically select in which columns and measurement types the search shall be conducted, right? So, are we looking? What kind of a variable are we looking for? Taking the boxes includes the variable in the measurement type. Let's look for advanced. Oh, look. What we found was that two people, and this is really important here, so if you're looking for uh, a kind of a data, right, kind of data, then what it's going to show me is the variable and then which cases have the word advance in it. And if we go back to uh, this, I love that. Um, the reason why I selected that is because I saw that advance, and there you go, 2 and 44, 2 and 44. Um, now we can do, um, let's look for, okay, these values. Let's see how many people chose S or 7.5. Okay, so all of the values of 7.5, um, are indicated here. And of course, it's only going to give us the variables that have these kinds of values available, even though I have um, everything selected. It really is only going to find what I want it to be. So case 18, case 30, 42, 55, and 83 all had 7.5 for this variable, a few more for HDLF, this one, and so on and so forth, right? So 7.5 was found in this number of cases, right? Or rows. So that's the search function, okay? So let's go back up to where my data, data, let's do replace. Ooh, this is going to be fun. So let's find advance. And we are going to replace it with, right? So here, um, this plus sign is indicating what is going to be changed, right? So right now it's got, uh, it's blank, right? Right now it's blank. And of course, it's only going to show me um, uh, 10 cases, right? So there are 83 more rows not shown here, right? So replace is going to, I'm going to change this to graduate. Oops. And then once I click off of it, it will change it to graduate. Now it's not done yet. As you can see, advance here. Okay, so we know that that's our advance. We can also do this multiple times. You can do exclusion, um, include or exclude various variables here um, to make it a more robust replacement um, or a more fine-tuned replacement. But I have to click on create here to actually make the change, right? So we have graduate, the plus means that it's going to be modified. We're gonna hit create and it opens up a new JASP file. And instead of advanced or advance, you have graduate. Okay. And this is to, I, I was distinguishing this from, you know, completed, I have a bachelor's degree or I have a graduate degree, right? Um, that, that, that's only, that's, that's essentially what this is supposed to indicate. So, um, and it also calls this something else with the RPLC, which is, which is replace without vowels, replace without vowels. So that is the replace. I'm gonna go ahead and take that off screen and close it. So that's the replace function. Uh, let's go to sort. All right, variables to sort. Okay, so sort is, please assign one or more variables to the variable box, variables to be sorted after. The order in which the variables appear in the variable box determines after which variable is sorted first. One could, for example, first sort after gender and afterwards after age. Variables are sorted in ascending order by default, as you can, but you can change the order if desired. Okay, so let's see what, let's see what happens here. Variables to sort after. Um, 
and we're going to do let's let's do descending right so, so we are sorting subject if we do descending then it's going to be the highest subject number or ascending which is what it already is which is that however we could do this with region um so we've got north america europe uh, other australia so we should assume that australia would go in right so australia there you go region and then a bunch of europe's and then whatever after but here you can do another one right so you can do then region then education and that could be um europe which would be in alphabetical order college college high less some 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 and then and you can keep going and i can add in gender here so right so then it'll put gender over here and then it'll put australia female europe college female europe college male europe high male right so you can sort in various ways that you want to and what will happen is if i click this create it will create a new data set and just and it'll put it in the exact way that i want to and it will do data set uh, underscore sort okay so that is the sort function let's go back to data and let's do change variable order change variable order please assign the variables in their desired order and desired order order of variables by ticking add remaining variables in the end at the end variables that are not contained in the desired order box are appended so let's i want to go ahead and change the h um and i want to make up first right so let's do uh and then i want to put yes hdhf hdlf ldhf and ld lf and then what's going to happen is we click that and it'll just add the rest of everyone over and that way i can look at this particular order and then put everything else or i can put subject here at the top and make sure that it's always on the left side of my data set but then my my variables of high importance are next to it so i don't have to keep scrolling imagine if you had a huge data set and you kept having to scroll or you wanted to see what was happening over here but have these other two windows open these kinds of things right these are quality of life adjustments create this it will create a new data set and it will append data set r calls arranged columns is what that okay so let's change variable order as we go i'm going to skip long to wide and wide to long we'll come back to those let's go to transpose shall we please assign up to one variable in the variable box column names for the output this variable might contain names of trials or questionnaire items if you leave the box empty generic variable names are going to be generated so v underscore dot 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 whatever that is so it's always going to have the v underscore in there the variables then become rows in your output data set to be assigned to variables to be transposed so let's um change these uh, i'm just gonna put these over here i'm just gonna let this be um v so variables in the output data set are going to be 94 variables in four rows and that's because i have four variables here right so id is ldlf ldhf hdlf hdhf and it's going to transpose those all into 200 something or 94 excuse me 94 rows right there are 84 more columns not shown here and if i hit create it makes that exactly what i wanted now the important thing to note is that your other variables are not in here right? they are not in here but this might help you do some long form calculations like um, mean standard deviations for a specific variable. There was one project that I had to do that was time series, but I had it all in uh, long format, but I needed to put it into wide format. This would be this. I had to do transposing in <laughs> that was a that was a really hard task. I had to do transposing in Excel and sometimes transposing in Excel is so finicky um, because it's a special kind of paste. You copy and you paste and it's just a pain in the ass. This would have been a dream for me 10 years ago a dream for me to do my time series calculations. So, and then it does data set X PSD, X for trans, PS3 for posed. Go ahead and close that. So that is the transpose of J transform. Let's go to merge. Okay, so merge add column. Um, variables to match a data set by. So you need to have two data sets that have the exact same, um, I don't know, subject, we'll, we'll, we'll say subject variable for here. Um, can I change this to a, an ID? There we go. Uh, let's go back to merge add columns. Okay, subject. And so then you look, for, I don't have one, but you go and look for this in your, um, uh, it's showing a bunch of stuff <laughs> that I don't want it to show. So you go and look for stuff in, you know, your documents or whatever um, that have a variable to match, right? So please assign one or more variables that appear in all data sets, like a participant code. That's exactly what you need, right? Um, in the variables to match. And then you go and look and you use browse. Separate multiple file names with semicolons. Okay, so these are only the file names. So if I were to choose, now I'm not going to go through with this because I don't have another one that has matching um matching ones let's just add in a dot csv here find let's just grab this one and open it right not all so it's giving me the error right but as you can see it adds in the file path here for that and then you use a semicolon if you want to add another file type of merging operations there are four different merging operations you keep all cases keep only cases cases contained in all merged data sets so you would need the uh so it, it would only find those matching cases across here right so there would have to be a subject one all the way through but of course see 40 doesn't have any values here so you can get rid of it right if 40 isn't in, in your other data set keep all cases from the currently opened data set okay so that would be this one as opposed to the one you're trying to merge um uh, from and then keep all cases from the data sets to be added so you would keep the cases in the merging data set not your open one right so of course i have to get rid of this to remove that and once you have that all set, you would hit create. I'm not going to do it here because I don't have it, obviously. So um, just note that uh, and it would create a new file like the other ones have been created. So that's that's that one. 
<laughs> and now it's just the thing's gonna be there. Now, long to wide, slightly different than um, the J reshape module uh, that you saw in my, you may have seen in my um, other video, right? So this is a little bit more involved, right? So here are the details. I am not gonna go through this. I think this is unnecessarily uh, confusing. So just, just play with that yourself. And then I'm going to point out wide to long here as the other one. Again, lots of details, lots of stuff to read. I'm not going to read it. I think you should play with it. But then you can do simple and advanced ways to do this or separate it. So not separated, simple and advanced or separated, right? And so pre prefix separator. I find the J reshape uh, to be far more intuitive um, and simple, although there is an advanced way to do wide to long. It's, that's, that's up to you. So that is the J transform module j transform search replace sort change variable order long to wide format wide to long format transpose and merge and columns great quality of life module if you do a lot of data set management in jamovi and not any other spreadsheet editor and that's going to do it for this episode please leave your comments suggestions feedback and other questions down in the comment section below thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one bye